going to get into the this book it's called phoenician origin of britons scots and anglo-saxons but by, by la waddell we actually read from this book a little bit in my part two of the uh, ireland and chaldea videos when we're talking about the pics we belly flopped to a chapter uh a little more ahead of this book that we're going to get into a little bit later as well i uh, just wanted to go ahead and show this figure right here it says aryan phoenician inscriptions on newton stone Part along king of the Scots about 400 BC, calling himself Britain, Hittite, and Phoenician. You see that? That's over there. Again, the Phoenician origin of Britons, Scots, and Anglo Saxons. Discovered by Phoenician and Sumerian inscriptions in Britain by pre Roman Britain coins and a massive new history. This is in the London University. All right. So Waddell is fellow of Royal Anthropological Institute, Folklore and Societies, Indian Archaeological Survey, and ex-professor of Tibet in London University, all right? This is from 1924. Then we go right into the uh, chapter one, first part of this uh, book. It says here, the Phoenician origin of the Britons, Scots and Anglo-Saxons. The Phoenicians discovered to be Aryans in race and the ancestors of the Britons, Scots, and Anglo-Saxons. All right, so I wouldn't be generalizing like all, all of them, but all right, we're going to see what they're going to say about what they got to say about them being the Aryans. All right, remember we got into the whole Aryan, Celtic, and Sanchrist, uh, Hebrew, you know, races on uh, when we're talking about, or nations when we're talking about uh, Ireland of Chaldees, they were mentioning the original languages and people. Now it says, in the preface, it is explained that the most suitable starting point to begin unrevealing the tangled skein of history for the lost threads of origin of the Britons, Scots, and Anglo-Saxons is from the fresh clues gained on the solid ground of the newly deciphered Phoenician inscriptions in Britain. The chief of these Phoenician inscriptions and the first to be reported in Britain is carved upon a hoary old stone of about 400 BC. See front piece dedicated to Bel, the Phoenician god of the sun. All right. They got this in Britain. They found this in Britain by a votary who calls himself therein by all three titles of Phoenician, Britain, and Scott. All three titles he calls himself by ancient forms of these titles and whose personal appearance is presumably illustrated in the nearly contemporary sculpture from his homeland figure 10 page 46 all right and thus preserving for us the name and titles of a prehistoric literate phoenician king of north britain upon his own original monument it at the same time supplies a striking proof of the veracity 
of the ancient traditions cited in the heading, which the eastern branch of Arians has faithfully preserved in their famous epic, the Great Bharats or Mahabharata, in the regard to the prehistoric worldwide civilizing conquest of the Panch or Phoenicians, the greatest ruling clan of the Aryan Bharats or Brihats. All right, so listen to what they're saying, combining the Hindu culture, Aryan, Indo, Indo Aryan that eventually went over there, right, to Hindustan. Talking about this famous uh, epic, the Aryans had the great Bharats, which they're calling the Phoenicians. The Aryan Bharats or Brihats, who we shall find were the ancestors of the Brits, the Brits or Britons, the Britons, Britons, the Brihats, Bharats, Brits, Bharats, Brits, Brihats, all the same people they're saying here, or Britons, our own ancestors. And the amplifying second quotation in the heading from the early Aryan Psalms, also preserved by the same Eastern branch of the Aryan Bharats or Britons. This closes the Phoenician motive for erecting this inscribed monument in early Britain to the god of the sun with his special symbol of the swastika cross, an emblem embroidered on the dress of the priest and priestesses of the sun and figured freely with other solar symbols on Phoenician and early Britain monuments and on pre-Roman Britain coins as we shall see later, all right? So real quick, wanna go back to the monument right here. This says here, Bel, the god of the sun and father god of the Phoenicians, all right? It says here from a Phoenician stele of about the fourth century BC. Again, they're finding things like this in Britain. This is what they're comparing. Continuing says, this brittle Phoenician inscription in Britain and in recording unequivocally the Aryan character of the Phoenicians as well as the Phoenician ancestry of the Britons and Scots merely confirmed the historical results, which I had previously elicited many years before from altogether different sources by discovering new keys to the Phoenician problem. All right, so he's talking about this symbol right here, what we came to know as the swastika crosses on the dress of the Phoenician, some priests carrying sacred fire, says here. Now he's given that symbol credit to the Phoenicians. Now, you know, I've shown you guys many numerous uh, pictures of American Indians wearing the same symbol in their clothing as well. Again, we're coming from a video I did the other day or yesterday about Phoenicians, right? Uh, coming out of Atlantis or their gods and their whole culture being the same. And we know Phoenicians supposedly in scripture came out of Canaan. Canaan is the promised land. The promised land is America. So, yeah, we would find American Indians with this same symbol where he's giving credit to the Phoenician. And again, they found the same symbol in Britain. These unlocked the sealed stores of history regarding the origin and activities of the early Phoenicians and disclosed them to be the leading branch of the Aryan race and Aryan also in speech and script and the lineal parents of the Britons, Scots and Anglo-Saxons. Before proceeding further, therefore, it is desirable to indicate briefly here what these new keys are and the manner in which I was led to discover them. In attacking the great unsolved fascinating Aryan problem, the lost origin of our fair long-headed civilized ancestors of the brittle Scandinavian and ancient Greco-Medo-Persian race who gave to Europe and Indo-Persia their Aryan languages and higher civilization all right so we would debate that right that's questionable all right if it was from that area of the world where was persia ancient persia really you know where was that a problem which had so completely baffled all the inquiring historians that after failing to find any traces of them as a race they threw it up in despair about half a century ago all right they're talking about the aryans they don't really know historians can't really prove their origin i took it up the problem at its Eastern or Indo-Persian and, and devoted to it most of my spare time during over a quarter of a century spent in India. There were some manifest advantages in attacking the problem from its Eastern end. Philologists 
ethnologists and anthropologists were generally agreed that the eastern branch of the ancient ruling Aryan race in India had presumably preserved in the Sankras dialect a purer form of the original Aryan speech than was to be found in the European dialects from Greek to Gothic and English, whilst they also preserved a great body of traditional literature regarding the original location, doings, and achievements of the early Aryan, which had been lost by the Western or European branch in the vicissitudes and destructive turmoil of long ages of migration and intercene wars. Besides this, the long prevalence in India of the rigid caste system by restricting intermarriages between different tribes and the dusky aborigines. Huh? The dusky aborigines? Do they mean dark complexion aborigines? Was supposed to have preserved the Aryan physical type and the ruling Aryan caste there in relatively purer form than in Europe. After acquiring a working knowledge of Sankris and the vernaculars and studying the Indian traditions written and unwritten at first hand, as well as all the reports of the Archaeological Survey Department on excavations, etc., and personally visiting all the most reputed ancient sites and making several fresh explorations and excavations at first hand and measuring the physical types of the people, I eventually found that, despite all that has been written about the vast antiquity of civilization in India, mostly by theorists who had never visited India, there was absolutely no trace of any civilization, example, higher civilization in India before the 7th century BC. All right? What are they talking about, huh? Who was there then? If that's supposed to be so old, there's really no proof of that being older than that he's saying right here, 7th century BC. Indeed, nothing whatever of traces of civilization apart from the root stone circles has ever been found by the scientifically equipped Indian Archaeological Survey Department in their more or less exhaustive excavations of the oldest reputed sites down to the virgin soil during over half a century, which can be specifically dated to before 600 BC. On the other hand, I observed that historical India like historic Greece suddenly burst into view about 600 BC. All of a sudden, right, India, just like all of a sudden, Egypt, all of a sudden, Rome and Greece, they're powerful, they're great. How did it all start? All of a sudden, India, right? In the pages of the Buddhist literature and in the Mahabharat epic, with a multitude of Aryan rulers, speaking of the Aryan language, with a fully fleshed Aryan civilization, they already had everything, is what he's pointing out, of precisely the same general type which has persisted down to the present day. There's no history of that in India. Origin, right? The question then arose, whence came these Aryan invaders suddenly into India about the 7th century BC with their fully fleshed Aryan civilization into a land previously uncivilized? On analyzing this early Aryan civilization, all right, who are these people he's saying? Thus suddenly introduced into India in regard to its culture, social structure, customs, folklore, and religion, and of the traditional topography and climate of its ancestral homeland, as described in the Vedas, descriptions wholly inapplicable to India. He's saying the Vedas does not apply to a lot of locations in India. They're not talking about in India and these ancient Vedas, the ancestral homeland of the Aryans, right? I was led by numerous clues to trace these Aryan, or as they call themselves, Arya. All right, pay attention. This means something. Invaders of India back to Asia Minor and Syria, Phoenicia. All right, so he's like, all right, they're not even from there. They're coming in from Asia Minor, it seems. Well, is that their real origin? Let's keep reading. It says, I then observed that the old ruling race of Asia Minor in Syria, Phoenicia, from immemorial time, were the great imperial, highly civilized ancient people, generally known as Hittites, right? Hittites, but who called themselves Kati, all right? Kati, or Kati, with a C, which is the self-same title by which the early Britain kings of the pre-Roman period called themselves and their race. You hear that? 
So the Hittites called themselves the Kati or Kati, and so did the early Britain kings of the pre-Roman period. They called themselves and their people, their race also, the Kati. All right. They even, it says here, stamped it upon their Britain coins, the so-called Kati, the word Kati, which is in figure three. We're going to check that out. And the early ruling race of Aryans, who first civilized India, also called themselves the Kati Yo. All right. The Kati, the Aryans called themselves the Kati. The Hittites called themselves the Kati. And the early Britain kings called themselves the Kati. You understand what they're telling you, right? This ancient Kati or Kati ruling race of Asia, Minor, and Syria, Phoenicia also called themselves Ari with the meaning of noble ones. All right. Now, this is deep right here. Ari means noble one. Now, this was the identical racial title which was also applied to themselves by the Indo Aryans or Eastern branch of the Aryans who called themselves Arya. The Ariya of the older Pali, which had also the literal meaning of noble. All right. Noble. Aryan. Listen, Aryan means noble. It has nothing to do with a white person, so-called white or a Caucasian or a pale skinned person. It has nothing to do with what the Kukas can or what they try to make us think and represent it. Aryan, the word Aryan, dodged the hijack. Aryan meant noble ones, noble, literal meaning of noble, and which is the actual word from which our modern English term Aryan has been coined. It comes from be noble, Aryan, noble. So if there was any Aryans anywhere in history, they were just talking about some noble people, people of royal blood, I guess. And these ancient Kati or Hittites, are represented in their ancient sculptures and Gothic dress. Here then, already I seem to have found not only the origin of the Indo-Aryans, but also the original land of the Aryan race. All right, the original land, we're talking about British Isles, huh? And the homeland of the Goths, all right? The homeland of who? The Goths and of our own ancestral Britons and Anglo-Saxons. And further examination soon confirmed this, all right? So I just want to show you the drawing here of the coins. It says here, figure three, Kati. Britain coins of pre-Roman Britain of about second century BC with sun symbols. All right. I want to close in on this real quick. As you guys can see, it literally said Kati right on it. And Britain, the British coins, they called themselves the Kati. The Br Britain kings, the ancient Britain kings called themselves the Kati. Just like the Hittites did, the Aryans called themselves the Katiyo, all right? The Ari, Ariant, which just meant noble, literally a noble one. The civilization of this Ari or Aryan race of Kati or Kati was essentially of the kind which is now called the Aryan type. And of the same type as that introduced into India by the Eastern branch of the Aryas or Aryans. In appearance, also these Kati, who were called the White Syrians by Strabo, are seen in their own rock sculptures and sculptured monuments of between 3000 and 2000 BC to be of the Aryan type. They are tall in stature with conical, ferrigial, ferrigial. Phrygian caps and snow boots were turned up toes and garbed significantly in what is now commonly called the Gothic style of dress. For the reason, as we shall see later, that they were the primitive Goths and the Goths were typically Aryan in race. All right. So again, we got to dodge the hijack big time because I know they're trying to say that these people are so-called white as they're saying, Strabo said, called them white. But what did Strabo really say? Was he talking about complexion? What do you mean? The, these pure people, right? The pure Syrians. So if these distinguish, and also now pay attention. Now, if he's making a distinguishment of white Syrians, then does that mean that there's black Syrians? 
All right, so that's what I mean. We got to analyze everything that's being said here. Again, white a lot of times meant uh, pure, for pure purity, right? Pure, a noble people, remember. Now, it's continuing, it says, Hittites or Katai, the early gods, the ruins of their great walled cities built upon, built of cyclopean masonry and adorned with sculptures and hieroglyphic writing are found throughout the length and breadth of Asia Minor and extend into Syria, Phoenicia, and the country is intersected by their great arterial highways, the so-called royal roads, radiating from their ancient capital at Bogas Khoi, or Preteria in the heart of Cappadocia, the traditional home of St. George of England, and the country in which St. Andrew, the apostle and patron saint of the Scots, is reported to have traveled in his mission to the Sits or Gatai, the Greco Roman form of the name Goth. The historical significance of this fact will be seen later. All right, so first of all, let's look at this image. This is how they're basically the early Kati or Kati or Hittites in their rock sculptures. All right, this is how they were dressing. Look at what their Phrygia, they called the Phrygia hat, the cone. Phoenicians, Aryan, you see the, like the Phoenician the, the, uh, symbols, symbols from Atlantis, as we got before, also, as well, how the Phoenicians basically had the same deities and beliefs as the Atlanteans. These ancient imperial Kati, people of Asia Minor and Syria Phoenicia, are the same ruling race which are now generally known as the Hittites. All right. These are the same people. They're saying they were the Hittites. All right. For although calling themselves Kati and called also thus by the Babylonians and ancient Egyptians, the Hebrews corrupted the spelling of that name into Heth and Hit in their Old Testament when referring to them as the ruling race in Phoenicia and Palestine. On the arrival of Abraham there, and the translators of our English version of the Hebrew text have further obscured the original form of the name by adding the Latin affix "-ite", thus arbitrarily coining the modern term "-hit-ite", "-hittite", or "-heth". It was supposed to be "-heth", or "-kath", huh? "-kathy", "-kathy". The identity of these "-kathy", "-ari", or "-hittites", with the eastern branch of the Aryans who invaded and civilized by Aryanizing India now made practically certain by my further observation that the latter people also called themselves in their epics by the same title as did the Hittites. They called themselves Catillo Arillo in their early Pali vernacular and latterly syncretized it by the intrusion of the R into Keshatriya Arya in Hindi Katri. Arya, and these Indian names Katillo, Kshatriya, have the same radical meaning of cut or ruler as the Hittite Kati has. Later, I observed that the early Kati or Hittites, as well as the Phoenicians, called themselves by an early form of Barat. Example, as we shall see the original of Brit or Briton, and that they also used that form itself, and that their language was essentially Aryan in its roots and structure. Hittite, are they saying? This practically established the identity of the Kati or Hittites with the Indo Aryans and disclosed Cappadocia and Asia Minor as the lost cradle land of the Aryans. All right. So he's still saying, because remember, he still believes this author. That the real promised land, that the Middle East, all that, and Mesopotamia is the cradle. So he's putting them there. That was a waypoint, right? To go from Britain, the Phoenicians were coming from the real Canaan, America. Let's not forget that, all right? So we got, again, we pull out the babies and we dodge the hijack. Because we're in the mind of a hijack, even though he's doing, he's digging up, he's picking up some jewels on his research and sharing it with us. This now led to my discovery of the key, or rather the complete bunch of keys to the lost early history, not only of the Indian branch of the Aryan, 
and its parent Aryan stock back to the rise of the Aryan race, but also to the lost history of the Kati or Hittites themselves, who have hitherto been known no earlier than about 2000 BC or still later. I had long observed that amongst the most cherished ancestral possessions, which the Indian branch of the Katillo Arillo Barats had brought with them from their old homeland to their new colony in India. All right, a new colony, right? Their old homeland, right? Where were they? The Barats, Britons, Brits, right? Their own homeland was an Asian minor, it was over there before they had come from, you know, the real old world. Atlantis, right? AKA America. We, we got that yesterday, right? As we know it as America. Remember Atlantis or as we know it, America. Remember that was written in the 1600s. Francis Bacon wrote that. All right. So again, the Arillo Barats had brought with them from their old homeland, right? In Britain, the British house to their new colony in India, like Ainus and his exile jealously, bringing with him his rescued household gods from his old Trojan homeland were their treasured traditional lists of their ancestral Aryan kings extending back continuously to the first Aryan dynasty in prehistoric times. All right, so it says here, figure five, Phoenician coin of Kardash inscribed Barat, right? Barat. The Phoenicians called themselves Barat too, Brits, Barat. Note the wind sun horse, Asva of the Kati Britain coins, all right? The wind horse is that a dragon the unicorn and on observed the head of barati or britannia barati britannia barat all right those treasured ancestral aryan kings list they embedded in their great epic the maha barata in summary but in their older epics the puranya they religiously preserved them in full detail there they cover many hundreds of pages recording in full detail the main line and numerous branch line dynasties from the commencement of the Aryan period down to historical times and specifying the names and titles of the various kings reproduced with scrupulous care and citing in regard to the more famous of them their chief achievements, thus making the record something of a chronicle of the kings as well. These traditional Aryan kings are implicitly believed by all Brahmins and modern Orthodox Hindus to be the genuine lineal ancestors of the present-day ruling Indo-Aryan caste in India. And often I observe in my travels through the country groups of villagers listening with rapt attention and reverence as one of them read out the narrative of great achievements by some of these traditional early Aryan kings who are confidently believed to be the genuine historical kings of the early Aryans and the ancestors of the pure Aryan ruling princes in India today, some of whom trace their ancestry back to them. And again, remember, just like in the royal family today in England, we see Queen Elizabeth and all these, you know, whitewash and all these, you know, hijacks. You're going to find it here in India too, a bunch of hijacks that are saying, you know, they are the royal of the ancient, ancient Aryans, Aryan men nobles. We're talking about Britons, Hittites, Phoenicians. We're talking about from Canaan. You know, you get it? But modern Western Vedic scholars, without a single exception, as far as I'm aware, have summarily rejected all this great body of epic literary historical tradition as mere, just as modern writers on British history have arbitrarily rejected the old traditional ancient British chronicles preserved by Geoffrey and Ninius. The excuses offered by Vedic scholars for thus rejecting these ancient epic traditional records are twofold. Firstly, they say that as these voluminous kings lists are not contained in the Vedas and only a very few of the individual kings therein are mentioned in the Vedas, which books they assure to be the sole source of ancient Aryan tradition. These kings list must be fabulous. In making such an objection, they entirely overlook the patent fact that the Vedas are merely a collection of Psalms and not all of historical in their purpose, so that one would no more expect to find in them systematic list of kings and dynasties than one would expect to find detailed list of kings all right, and prophets in the Psalms of David. 
The second argument of Vedic scholars for rejecting these ancient epic kings lists is, as they truly say, that no traces whatever of any of these early Aryan kings can be found in India. But this fact is now disclosed by the new evidence to be owing to the very good reason that none of these early Aryan kings has ever been in India. They didn't originate there. Okay? But were kings of Asia Minor, Phoenicia, Mesopotamia, right? They're going with the hijack. They mean the promised land. They were kings from the promised land, and they were also British Britain kings. All right? Before they had arrived in India. The Kati Hittites, right? Before the separation of the Eastern Branch to India. Before they separated and went into India. Picking up these despised traditional epic king's list of the early Aryans thus contemptuously rejected by Vedic scholars I compared the names of their later mainline dynasties with the names of the latter historical Hittite kings of Asia Minor as known from their own still extant monuments as well as from the contemporary Babylonian and Assyrian records and I found that the father of the first historical Aryan king of India as recorded in the Mahabharata epic and Indian Buddhist history, was the last historical king of the Hittites in Asia Minor. You hear that? He said the father of the first historical Aryan king of India that's recorded in the Baha Mahabharata, right? Is the same one that was the last king of the Hittites in Asia Minor. He's going to explain this. Who was killed at Kar Shemesh of the upper Euphrates on the final annexation of that last of the Hittite capitals to Assyria by Sargon II in 718 BC. And I further found that the predecessors of this Hittite king, as recorded in the cuneiform monuments of Asia Minor and in the Assyrian documents back for several centuries, were substantially identical with those of the traditional ancestors of this first historical Aryan king of India, as found in these Indian epic kings list. Thus, the absolute identity of the Indian branch of the Aryans with the Kati or Hittites was established by positive historical proof. And at the same time, the Kati or Hittites were disclosed to be Aryans in race and of the primary Aryan stock and the truly historical character of the Indian epic kings list was also conclusively established on further scrutinizing the earlier dynasties of these epic kings list I observed that several of the leading kings of the earlier Aryan dynasties in these lists bore substantially the same names with the same records of achievements and in the same relative chronological order of several of the leading kings of early Mesopotamia. All right, remember, so who are these kings of Mesopotamia and all that? They go back to Atlantis. We just got the video yesterday. So we got to, you know, dodge the hijack. Because again, we're in the mind of a hijack. He's trying to put the promised land in the desert right there in the so-called Middle East in a fake hole, uh, holy land. All right. A fake cradle of civilization. It's not over there. We've already broke this down many times. So-called Sumerians, right? Remember the so-called Sumerians and the Akkads or Akkadians, right? Acadia, Nova Scotia, Sumerians. Remember, we just read the book Shinar in Europe or Summer in Europe, Ireland and the Ur of the Chaldees, where it was telling you that was most likely in that area over there as recorded in their own still extant monuments and in the fragmentary ancient chronicles of that land. Still further, I observed that isolated early kings of Mesopotamia who are only known to Assyriologists from their stray inscribed monuments as solitary kings of unknown dynasty and unknown origin and race. They don't know nothing about these people, these so-called Assyrians. Remember, Assyrians come from Ashur. Ashur is a son of Shem. All right, a son of Shem, yeah, Ashur is a son of Shem. These are all Shemites, Semites, Semites, Asur, Assyrians. All right, so they don't know nothing about their origin, their saying and race were mostly recorded in my kings list in their 
due order and chronological succession in their respective dynasties with full lists of the Aryan kings of these dynasties who had preceded and succeeded them. It thus became obvious that these Indian epic kings lists supplied the key to the material required for filling up the many great blanks in the early history of ancient Mesopotamia in the dark and prehistoric period there. Not only did these epic kings lists lighten up the dark period of early Mesopotamian history, but they shed a similar illuminating light upon the dark period of early Egyptian history and prehistory as well, and disclosed the wholly unsuspected fact that Menes and his pre-dynastic civilizers of early Egypt were also of this race of the Kati or Hittites, Menes, uh, Mesarim, Mizraim, Menes, Hittite, white Syrians or Aryans. No, they're not white, so-called white pure, noble, of noble blood. The Kati, the Phoenicians also were now disclosed to be Aryans in race and Kati, Ari or Hittite Aryans by this new historical keys thus placed in my hands. This therefore corroborated the fact found by anthropologists from the examination of Phoenician tombs that the Phoenicians were a long-headed race like the Aryans and of a totally different racial type from the Jews to whom they have hitherto been affiliated on merely linguistic arguments by Semitists. This Eastern or Indian branch of the Aryans, the Katillo Arillo Barats, called themselves in their epic the Maha Bharata by the joint clan title of Kuru Panch Allah, a title which turned out to be the original of Syrio Phoenician. These Kuru and Panch Allah are described as the two paramount kindred and confederated clans of the ruling Aryans, and they are repeatedly referred to under this confederate title in the Vedas. Now, Kur, I observed was the ancient Sumerian and Babylonian name for Syria and Asia Minor of the Hittites or white Syrians, and it was thus ob obviously the original of the Surya of the Greeks, whilst Panch Allah is defined in the Indian epics as meaning the able or accomplished Panch. In complement, it is there explained to their great ability, also an outstanding trait of the Phoenicians in, their, in the classics of Europe. This disclosed Panch to be the proper name of this ruling Aryan clan, whom I at once recognized as the Phoenicians or Fanch, Phoenicians, the Fenka or Panag or Panasa, seagoing race of the Eastern Mediterranean of the ancient Egyptians, the Phoenix of the Greeks, the Phoenix, right? Like Phenoch, Phoenix, Enoch of the Greeks and the Phoenix S of the Romans, the Phoenix of the Romans, this Panch ruling Aryan clan was celebrated in the Vedas as the most ardent of all devotees of the sun and fire, called associated with worship of the father god Indra, as in the Vedic verses cited in the heading, and we shall see that the Hitto Phoenician were special worshippers of the father god Bel, also called by them Indara. Indra, Indara, Bel, they called them, the Hittites called their Bel, Father God Indara, just like Father God Indra of the Hindus, who was the sun cult and whose name is recorded in the early Britain monuments to be examined later on. The Panch Aryan clan was also significantly the foremost seagoing Aryan people of the ancient world in the Vedas, and in which most, if not all, of the many Aryan kings celebrated in the Vedic hymns as having been miraculously rescued from shipwrecked by Indra or his angels were kings of the Panch Aryan clan and a ship of a hundred oars is mentioned in connection with them. These Panch Aryan and also sometimes called Krivi in the Vedas, which word is admitted by Sankras to be the variant of Kuru, which we have seen means Kur of Syria. This confederate Vedic title for them and their kingsmen, the latter Syrians, 
namely Kuru Panch Allah. This does seem to be the equivalent of the latter title for these two confederate Aryan ruling clans, the Syrians and Phoenicians, which is referred to in the New Testament as pseudo Phoeniki and English into Syrio Phoenician. Further, I found that the early Phoenician dynasties in Syrio Phoenicia or the land of the Amorites of the Hebrews, as well as in early Mesopotamia on the shores of the Persian Gulf, where Herodotus records that the Phoenicians were located before about 2800 BC, also called themselves by the Kati or Hittite title and also by the early form of Barat, all right, Barat, in their own still extant monuments and documents and dated back to about 3100 BC, the Phoenician Kati Barat, ancestry of the Britons and Scots and of the pre-Roman Britain Kati kings was then elicited and established by conclusive historical evidence in due course. The Anglo-Saxons also were disclosed, as we shall see, to be a later branchlet of the Phoenician uh, Britons, which separated after the latter had established themselves in Britain. This identity of the Aryans with the Kati or Hittites was still further confirmed and more firmly established by further positive and cumulative evidence. In 1907, at the old Hittite capital, Bogaskoy in Cappadocia, Winkler discovered the original treaty of about 1400 BC between the Kati or Hittites and their kinsmen neighbors on the east and ancient Persia, the Mitanni, who I have found were the ancient Medes, who also were famous Aryans and called themselves Ariya or noble ones, remember? In this treaty, they invoked the actual Aryan gods of the Vedas of the Indian branch of the Aryans and by their Vedic names. Significantly, the first god invoked in the Vedic sun god Mitra, example, the Mitra of the Greco-Romans. As soon as some of the latter Aryans made separate gods out of different titles of the father god. All right, look at these people creating their idols. All right, his name is followed by Indara, that is the solar Indra or Almighty the principal deity of the Indo-Aryan Vedic scriptures, and as instanced in the verses cited in the Hedin, the especial god of the Bharats or Brihats or Brits and of their Panch or Phoenician clan, and his image and title are represented on ancient Britain monuments and coins. But even this striking historical evidence of itself did not include either the Assyriologists or the Vedic scholars to seriously entertain the probability that the Hittites were Aryans, obsessed with the preconceived notion that the Hittites, whatever their affinities might be, were certainly not Aryans. The present work is the first installment of the result, results disclosed by the use of newfound keys to the lost history of the Aryan race and their authorship of the world's higher civilization. It offers the results in regards to the lost history of our own Aryan ancestors in Britain, and this closes them, the early Britons and Scots and Anglo-Saxons, to have been a leading branch of the foremost world pioneers of civilization, the Aryan Phoenicians, all right? And then we got this figure right here. It says figure 5A, Britain prehistoric monument to Bell at Craignargate, Westonshire with Hitto-Phoenician sun crosses, etc. All right. Look at the swastika right here. The cross. All right. A monument to Bell or Bell, right? A Phoenician god, Belus, Bell. All right. Bell, Bell, Bell. Are right, you spinning on a ball? And that's in, you know, Britain, right? So they broke down here a little bit of the Aryans, or his theory. You know, it makes a lot of sense, but the Aryans might be coming off, you know, when we talk about Phoenicians and Aryans and who were the Phoenicians, right? We already got that from yesterday's video. Again, this was chapter one, goes on to chapter two. All right. We're just going to stop it right here in this book for now. And uh, just to continue a little bit in the video, just to correlate 
here's I thought it was very interesting that key thing about the Kati. It says here, Hittite Empire, comparing Kati and Kitim from the Bible, right? Kitim, their unique Macedonic origin, origins, history, and mythology. Hittite Macedonic vocabulary. And it says here, ethnically, the Hittites were in no way connected with other inhabitants of Palestine. In Syria, their closest kin were the Phrygians, today Armenians. Now, one show down here it says they were the first group of people known to history that break away from the big family of Proto-Indo-Europeans, also known as the Pelasgians, which was probably the original Greeks, right? The real Greeks, so-called Greeks, the Hyperboreans, the Barbarians, example, Barb, Aryans, the Barbarians, the Aryans, the Barbary, Barbary, Ari, noble the barb noble ones the barb the babel ones the ones the noble ones who babel or was barb mean huh? the nubian or egypt central balkan civilization old europe etc the very name barb aryans the very name barb aryans example barbarians unexpectedly discovers their distinguished noble origin aryan means noble remember as the prehistoric populace which gave the birth and forced the first known civilization they gave the names to the early indo-european terminology going back with the macedonian rearrangement to the characteristic indo-european terms of culturally vocabulary this pre-indo-european linguistic substrate is the source that influenced the proto-macedonic language and later the upper high macedonic and old macedonian later renamed old church slavonic now further down says further the bible gives us a glimpse and another confirmation on the continuity and connections of the hittites with their overseas macedonian homeland namely hittites of the bible are the kita of the egyptian monuments the kati remember the kati the book was just letting us know that's them of the assyrian cuneiforms and the Kai, pronounced Kaiteo of Homer on the other side of the agency. The Macedonians of the Bible are the Kitim. Kita, Kati, Kitim is the Hittites, same people. This is far from semantic coincidence as Hittites, Nazi, and Kittites, Macedons of the second millennium BC were one and the same, just being divided by numerous later historical constructions made by different authors, religions, and politics. Linguistic affinities are undeniable, and even after 3,000 years, there are ancient Macedonic Hittite words that are equal and still in use in modern Macedonian. All right, map of Kati or Hittite, Kasi or Barat. You see that Barat, place names, Barat, Brits, the Brits, Barat, Kasi or Hittite in Phoenician colonies in Mediterranean. All right, they're all over here. As you can see in the Britain, I want to show you, I'm going to give a close-up to this, all right? Now you see the British Isles right here, Scotia, Scotia, it says Britain, it says Kati, you see that? Kati, Chati over here, Kati over here too, the mainland, is that France or Norway, what is that? Denmark, then he's got Kati, Kati over here in Britain, right? Again, the Kati or Hittite, Kasi or Barat, or the Brits, Barat. Kati names in Roman capital, Kati Barat. Other ethnic names in italics, all right? Hittites, or the Katis, Katis. Just like over here in Britain, it says Kati, with a C. Kati, as you can see, Kati, all right, Kati. All right, so I hope you, uh, enjoyed this uh video the segment again we're going to read all these chapters and correlate everything i just want to get through some of these chapters so we you know when i'm doing other videos we can reference what i've read before so you guys know what i'm talking about that's it says here phoenician tribal title of barat all right a tribal title barat or brihat and its source of names britain britain and britannia so the hittite name for Britain was Baratana, Britana, Brat, Baratana. We're going to read all this stuff. We're going to get into this. We're going to get to another book called Ancient and Modern Britons as well and correlate all this eventually with the uh, Chaldean Ireland video. And that's why I want to do this. 
Where were they really coming from? These so-called Phoenicians, remember? All their customs, all their deities are all Atlantean gods. Canaan is the promised land, is in America. Where were these Phoenicians really coming from? Where did the Joshua, the robber, really kick them out of? Before they ended up in the Iberian Peninsula, North Africa, the British Isles, you know, and even as the Aryans in India, Hindustan. All right, so much love and respect. Thanks for tuning in. I'll probably come with another video tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Wow.